Hey everyone, Lewis here with Lab Padre, bringing you episode two of Starbase Weekly Updates. Now let's get to the action. On March 10th, Booster 7's methane section was rolled out as crews prepare to stack the booster. The lower half contains the liquid oxygen tank and the booster's engines. A few hours later, the methane tank section was lifted, placed on the booster, and welded together, completing the assembly of the new booster's propellant tanks. Meanwhile, in Florida, at the port, Falcon 9 Booster 1052 arrived on one of SpaceX's autonomous drone ships. After the boosters land, they are returned to the port where they'll be lifted off the barge for maintenance and servicing. Early the following day, Booster 1060 was lifted and laid horizontally for transport to Roberts Road Maintenance Facility after its 11th successful launch and recovery at sea. With Falcon 9 Booster 1060 having departed the previous day, Booster 1052 made its timely return to the port side facilities where it will also be unloaded. Back over at Starbase, workers assembling the wide bay began placing the header beam assembly above the doorway. This structure will carry the loads from the upper levels of the building across the gap left for the booster sized door. At the orbital launch site, crews began working on disconnecting the claws of the stabilizer arm preparing them for removal from the quick disconnect arm on the launch tower. With the fixtures disconnected from the quick disconnect servicing arm, the first claw was soon lowered to the ground. It's not yet known why the claws have been removed, but the Nurdle has speculated that they will be adding more margin for adjustment. With the second claw also removed shortly after the first, crews were later seen performing additional work on the tower's quick disconnect arm. Late in the evening of March 12th, the final preparations for the next round of vehicle assembly testing began, with the quick disconnect arm swinging away from the booster. With everything else ready, Mechazilla's chopsticks, which are used to stack Starship on Super Heavy, were lifted high up the tower before being lowered back down. Once the test was completed, stacking operations were set to begin. Late in the afternoon of March 13th, Ship 20 was moved around the launch site a bit before being brought back and rotated into the right orientation and position for lifting and stacking on the booster. The ship was then placed between the chopsticks in preparation for lifting. With the ship now safely within reach of the launch tower's lifting arms, which need to be securely attached to the ship before it can be raised, the ground teams, Booster 4, and Starship 20 are almost ready for stacking. Early the next morning, just a few hours later, the ship disconnect arm, which provides ground support for Starship including power, data, and propellant loading and unloading services, was observed venting. Each of the nine apparent venting events lasted from 15 to 25 seconds and verified that the arm was ready. Pre-dawn ground testing was not just carried out for the ship, but also for Super Heavy's ground systems, with venting also observed from Booster 4. Later in the morning, the arm's quick disconnect mechanisms, which are mounted to their own armature for both launch safety and positional fine-tuning, were seen retracting a few hours later. Meanwhile, construction of the wide bay continued to move quickly, with crews installing beams and columns for the final top levels of the massive new building. As Ship 20 was disconnected from the ground pressurization systems prior to stacking, a dent soon formed as the internal pressure that helped support the ship dropped. With the ship depressurized and ready to be taken off its transport stand, the quick disconnect arm was swung outward, clearing the way for the upcoming lift. As the sun dropped low in the sky, the left stabilizer arm was moved into position, with the right following about four minutes later. These adjustable armatures keep the Starship stable while stacking. At long last, with the arms and stabilizers locked in place, it was time to lift the ship. Over the next 59 minutes, Starship 20 was picked up and positioned over the booster and was quickly maneuvered into position prior to final mating. SpaceX set a new record pace with this lift, beating the old record of 3 hours and 15 minutes by a wide margin. With the ship and booster stack looming over the launch site, the ground support arm, now lacking its stabilization claws, swung back into place. Shortly after sunset, after the adjustable armatures of the chopsticks had carefully moved everything into position, 
Starship 20 was finally placed on top of the booster. Not long after the lifting and stacking operations were finished, the ground support connection on the quick disconnect arm was carefully maneuvered into position and precisely aligned with the launch vehicle's holding pins before being securely attached to the ship. At around 10:12 p.m., with a long day of stacking operations finally complete, Highway 4 was reopened to the public. Early the following morning, the first two major support trusses were lowered into place. This assembly spans the distance between the wide bay's front and back walls between the doorways, structurally tying the building together at the roof. With the first truss segment in place, multiple large beams were installed next. These beams were lowered behind the wide bay's cladded walls, where they will carry the loads of the facility's two full-length bridge cranes. With the ship and booster stacked the previous night, it was finally time to begin cryotesting. Over the next few hours, the ship and booster were brought up to and held at pressure on the pad. The propellant tanks were kept at a minimal fill level, with frost rings never rising above the dome levels. As testing wrapped up, the thin frost lines began to recede. Once testing wrapped up, viewers were treated to the impressive sight of the ship and booster depressing their propellant tanks at the same time. With testing finally completed, the road was once again reopened at around 9.51 p.m. local time. And there you have it. Thanks for watching Lab Padre's weekly Starbase news. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, click the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when our next video drops. See you all next week. Lab Padre out.